Today, I'm sharing my recipe for a white grape juice pie mint with you. So let's get started. So a while back, I was walking through Walmart, kind of my big grocery store around me, and I saw two things. I saw, first of all, a bunch of just regular Welch's grape juice, or really it was great value, but I'm gonna call it Welch's. And I also saw a white grape juice from Great Value as well. And my brain being YouTube mead maker said, I haven't done this before, let's do it. So this brew is mostly a, a, a grocery store pie mint recipe, meaning that I got the honey, um, I also got the grape juice, didn't get the yeast from the store, the equipment is not from Walmart either, so I guess the ingredient wise, we're about 66% a uh, grocery store brew. So here's a recipe card for what I did at a one gallon point. I made this into a two gallon recipe. So yours, well, what you see might be a little bit larger than what is on the card and that's okay. A very important note here is that when you're doing this brew and doing any mead for that matter, you generally want to ferment in a bucket or something larger than your end goal. Meaning if you want it to set in a one gallon carboy, to fill up the one gallon carboy, whatever fermentation vessel you ferment in the primary should be larger than that, and your total volume should go over it slightly. So the one gallon recipe I'm saying here, there's a reason it says water up to 1.2 gallons. You're going, wait, that's one gallon. At the end of this whole process, there's going to be less than your starting volume. So the 1.2 gallons of, I said water, but I really meant grape juice, will help us get to the total volume of one gallon. So I gathered my white grape juice. I got 192 ounces, which was I think two bottles of white grape juice from Welch's. I had four pounds of honey. So our total volume is exceeding the two point whatever gallon part which, a little fun fact for you, 12 pounds of honey is equal to one gallon of volume. So four pounds of honey gives us a third of a gallon, which sits us a little bit over the two point whatever mark that I started with. For you, it'll be two pounds of honey and 96 ounces of Welch's grape juice. We are using some wine tannin, specifically in this, to help build up a body, build up a bigger profile, which is gonna be helpful in the future. And we are also going to use um, the Lauvin D47. Not my favorite yeast in the world, but if you ferment in the right temperature range, it ferments well. So we mix together our white grape juice, our honey. We added our yeast in, and I, I have a little drill attachment. I highly recommend it. It's way better than shaking things up. So that's why I recommend. After we'd mixed everything together, including our tannin, um, there is yeast nutrient we'll add and the 24 hour mark, so that Fermade O in the recipe card is going to be added at some point soon. Mix it all, add yeast, take a gravity reading. This thing does start at a pretty steep starting gravity. This thing for me started at 1.130 starting gravity using a hydrometer, super important tool. I encourage you to get one. You float the hydrometer in a tube of your starting liquid. It gives you a starting gravity number, which is the amount of sugar that is currently in the brew. After the yeast have consumed said sugar to a certain point, you can take another gravity reading and there's an equation to find out your total alcohol by volume because you have these two numbers. So get the hydrometer and it'll help you out. Starting gravity 1.130, put a lid on it, let it start fermenting. This thing, was kind of funky to ferment. At that 24 hour mark, I added my yeast nutrient, which I believe was about five grams. I might have underdosed. I think I underdosed the amount of nu nutrient I needed. And I'll talk about why I know that in a second. So I put a different number on the card. I put five grams of yeast nutrient in for my two gallons, roughly about 2.5 grams per gallon. I probably should have put about four in hindsight. This thing fermented over the course of about three weeks and then it stopped. And it stopped and I knew it stopped because it started to clear up. The yeast had fallen to the bottom and I was like, okay, something is done. Took another gravity reading. The gravity after the primary fermentation was a uh, very strong 
1.050 gravity. That's still a lot of sugar. The, the D47 totes it can go up to, I believe 14%. So we've stopped short of our total ABV cap. Could I have shaken it up and um, maybe got a little more oxygen in, added some yeast nutrient to see if it'd go further? Yes. Did I do that? No, because I actually wanted this to, to stay there. 1050 is a very sweet brew. However, I believed that I could figure out how to balance the scales of sweetness to tannin, or oak in this circumstance, and acidity. So we had this brew, final gravity 1.050. Yours might ferment further, just spoilers. You might have a brew that goes to 1.020, or even it might go out completely, 1.000. I'd be shocked if it did. It was time for us to move it into a new container. So we did that. We took and racked it into a new container. I went ahead and stabilized this thing only to play it safe. Stabilizing is the process of halting any future fermentation. Because this had fermentable sugar still in there and had halted, it, we really didn't need to do that because the yeast were like, hey, I'm done. But I was like, I'm gonna make sure you're done. So we added our potassium sorbate, metabisulfite. To stabilize, you can also pasteurize the brew. Regardless what you do here, before you back sweeten, stabilize the brew, um, unless you are 100% certain that there could be no further fermentation. But I'd rather play it safe. This brew was stabilized. It was time to do something more with it. Being a piment and a white grape juice piment, I know that we don't always oak uh, white wine. Sometimes they are, sometimes they're not. I went ahead and oaked it. We added a half ounce of American oak chips for about three weeks, which was a fair amount of time. Enough time for those oak chips to really give a woody character and flavor. And then we went ahead and moved it into a new container off of the oak chips. At this point, we were like, well, what do I do? I've got the oak. I've got this really sweet grape flavor. The last thing is acid balance. Now, I didn't really take any video of this and I forgot to, well, I should have. Essentially what I did was I took a small container of some of the liquid and I sprinkled in the three main brewing acids, citric, malic, and tartaric in, in each container. I taste tested them to see which one would work best. In this circumstance, the best one to uh, contrast the acid that was already there was actually a sprinkle of citric acid. So I sprinkled in some citric acid, kind of to taste, to my main brew. So now I've got a acid balance that contrasts the sweetness that has some oak in this kind of full round profile is here. This brew at this point is only about seven weeks old. So we could let it set for a long time just to age. I uh, wanted to clear it up and get, be done with it. So I went ahead and added a thing called Sparkaloid, which is a clearing agent. It works really well and quickly. You could just let this thing set and age over time. Most importantly, don't age with uh, headspace, meaning that there's oxygen on top. So I tried to avoid that. Once it had cleared up, we went ahead and bottled it. So I got a bottle of it here and I had a bunch of bottles of it. I shared some with my friend Mandy from Faywood Mead, who you might recognize. And uh, she helped me with the tasting. I'm not gonna taste it right now because we did a whole tasting thing. I do have to admit a failure on my end. And that is I lost the video files from my tasting with Mandy. I kept the audio somehow, but I accidentally deleted uh, <laughs> the video of her from her Zoom call. So I have mine video, but what you'll see is a cartoon rendition of Mandy from Faywood Mead. And it's very different. It might be jarring for some of you because it's we go it goes back and forth from me as a real person to her as a cartoon. But it was my best way to remedy the situation that I created by deleting the files. So. I hope you enjoy this tasting. If it's weird with a cartoon character, I'm sorry, um, but I hope you at least still glean some fun things from this tasting here. And uh, you should definitely go support Mandy because uh, she's awesome. So let's hop over to the tasting of a white grape juice piment. Let's go. All right, here we are. Mandy, welcome to yet another tasting. You've been a Thank part you. of many. It's a pleasure. I have a piment you how how familiar are you with piments only so so i suppose uh i've made a couple myself not with any like real traditional grapes i don't mm. know like concord yeah. <clears throat> you know muscadine 
Um, but I have tried a couple of like red pie mints. Okay. Never a white pie mint though. I well, I'm not saying this is nice grape juice. This is um, <laughs> great value. Uh, white grape juice. I don't even necessarily know what. What I don't know much beyond that, other than it came wow. from a bottle of white grape juice from Great Value Brand. You ready to try it? Yeah, let's go. Hope there's no hiss. Okay, I always worry about that. All right, let's see what this thing looks like. Okay. Nice. Mine just looks through the bottle like it had some floaty friends. Maybe it has a couple floaty friends. So not bad. Yeah, mine looks pretty clear. All right, I personally have never done a white grape piment. This is my first one. I've never really, like you said, done a true piment. I'm experimenting now with actual grape juice, actual grapes, excuse me, and fermenting on skins. It's a whole big mess. If this is easier, if this turns out great, then I will probably go with just grape juice instead of the actual grapes because they are kind of a pain to deal with, to be honest. Oh yeah. Let's get a nose check on this guy first. Tell mm -hmm. me what you got. Hmm. Definitely honey. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yes. Definitely. I get a lot of, um, it's a very rich aroma. Yeah. It's super deep. I'm also um, not super familiar, like when it comes to grape, um, I'm still getting used to identifying grapes and stuff in piments and things. And obviously like people are like, well, I know what grape juice tastes like, but then once you ferment it, you know, that little bit of a difference, so. Mm-hmm. Anything else you know? It's kind of like a, I don't know if toffee's the right word. And I know it's it's probably the, the honey for sure is like mm. a big player in that smell, but it does have this nice, like rich, like sweet. Yeah. I was trying to find that there's that ri yeah the richness that the the word that I was trying to put to something else there is a toffee caramely salted salted caramely kind of um, yeah. vibe here which is interesting I hope it it's not good. salty <laughs> <laughs> all right well let's taste it here we go okay cheers it's thick <laughs> woo <laughs> yeah all right first impressions what you got. Oh my gosh. I mean, it is like decent for how sweet it is. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's like a sweet, it's like a dessert wine. It is, yes. It's definitely a dessert wine, but it doesn't like burn your throat or anything with the amount of sweetness. Like it's it's actually pleasant. It's a very full mouth. Yeah. Like, <laughs> yes. Mouth, full body. <laughs> yeah. Um, it's thick. It's chunky. <laughs> it is. Yeah, I think definitely if it fermented down just a little bit more. Yeah. It would be... I mean, it's pretty solid. That's like a a decent little table wine. Yeah. There, a little little table piment. I haven't had it in about a month, I want to say. I bottled it about a month ago. Mm -hmm. Maybe. I don't know. My timeline's all over the place. I'll put up for people watching a timeline of what actually happened and when so you can kind of see and make this yourself. But I feel like I when I bottled it, it was pretty hot and... It's still got some heat, to be fair. There's not, there, you know, it's not like it's suddenly, oh my gosh, so smooth after a month later. Mm -hmm. But it's arguably a little bit smoother than when I last tasted it. It's only about, we burned through 80 points of gravity, so somewhere in the 10.5% range. What, what I liked about this is I didn't have to back sweeten. That was kind of a nice thing. Yeah. Now, there's a, you know, obviously it ended up really sweet. So if I wanted to have more control i probably should have started with a lower starting gravity anyways all that it's not bad no it's really not that's a i mean it's pretty easy to drink yeah it oh. might definitely be like too sweet for some people but 100 percent, 100 percent. i think it is given it you knocked out 15 points of gravity end at 10 35 i think it'd be way more balanced it's definitely yeah. not going to hit the people who are the wine drinkers that's for sure the wine drinkers Not are going to go, are going to turn their nose up to this because it's way too sweet for them, for sure. I have had a sweeter dessert wine at a winery, though. Oh, really? Surprisingly, yes. It wow. was sweet. Was it good, though? <laughs> it was. It was good. Um, and it's funny because the gal who, um, the 
what in the heck? The wine lady? The Psalm? I don't know. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> she she was just like, um, you know, this like we do have a dessert wine, but not everyone likes it. Just an FYI, because I was getting a, a flight. Right. And I was like, oh, no, I want to try it. Like, lay it on me, you know? And it was it was sweeter than this. Wow. For sure. You're like, I, I like mead. I like sweet stuff. Yeah, for sure. Let's let's roll for it. Let's go for it. Yeah. That's funny. Exactly. Well, I, I'm pleasantly surprised, especially given how, how old this is. I am looking forward to trying it here in, you know, I don't know how many more. Actually, I do have plenty of bottles of it because I made close to two gallons. So it could be oh, interesting. Wow. If I had enough, this is a total, you know, offshoot. Uh, this video might take a while to come out. If I have any ability to send it off to a competition, I might just for fun, just to see how it does. Low expectations, you know. And uh, if I do that, there's results here. If I didn't, then you're, I'm holding um, a pumpkin right now. So, you know, um, we'll see what happens. I am curious to do more of this though. Does this inspire you to try a pie mints yourself? Or are you, is that on your oh, docket? Oh, heck yeah. Oh, it's on my list. I, I want to I want to get a hold of some grapes or like fresh press. Yeah. There's so many wineries out here. I just need to like mm -hmm. hit some of them up. You know. You should. You should. I I'm envious. We have zero wineries here in Oklahoma. Surprising. Well, that's not true. We have one or two. Debatable oh, on wine. Um, the kind of wine they're producing. So, anyways, Ooh. if you've never checked out. Mandy or Faywood Mead as she's been hanging out with me tonight. She has her own YouTube channel. You should go check her out. She does mead stuff as well. She has some incredible videos and incredible explainers on mead, which is super fun. So if you want to go learn some stuff, have some fun, hang out with Mandy. I'll put some links below, but go check her out. Thanks for being a part of this. Thank you. All right. It's a pleasure as always. We got another one to record, so let's do it.